Hello everyone, this is your next lesson, which is going to cover the distributed property. Your learning target today is that you are going to learn how to break down and practice the distributed property with numerical values. And one of the things I have on this slide is that distributed property is basically breaking down a large fact into two known smaller facts. Two or more, really. Let's get right down to it. In our first example, we have 8 times 46. And you have a number next to parentheses that indicates multiplication. So what we're going to do is we're going to break up the number 46 into two simpler numbers that we can mentally multiply. 46 is made up of four tens, basically 40, and six ones, of course. Now, one of the first steps you're going to do, besides what we just did, is you're going to rewrite the problem. We're going to expand the parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, we're going to write what we broke up 46 into. It's 40 plus 6. Then, our next step is to multiply. We're going to call this distributing. So we're going to distribute the 8 into both of these terms. 8 times 40, and then 8 times 6. And I'm going to write like that, 8 times 40, and I'm going to write 8 times 6 like that, and then I'm going to stick a plus sign in between them. Next is to just multiply. 8 times 40 is 320, because 8 times 4 is 32. So 8 times 40 is 32 with 0, 320. 8 times 6 is 48. And now it's just a matter of putting them together. 320 plus 48 is 368. So to recap what we just did, we took the number, 46, and we broke it up. It's really easy to think of it as 40 plus 6. Then we wrote the problem as 8 times 40 plus 6, distributed the 8, distributing means basically multiplying, and then sticking a plus sign in between our products. 8 times 40, 8 times 6. We got 320, and we got 48, and then adding that up gives us 368. Our next example takes a, a little bit of a different look at this. Instead of looking at 98 as 90 plus 8, we're going to think of it as 100 minus 2 because 98 is very, very close to 100. So there's another way to look at distributed property besides just addition. So we're going to break it down again. 4 is outside the parentheses. That is the number that's being distributed. Instead of writing 90 plus 8, we're going to write 100 minus 2, which is exactly the same thing. 100 minus 2 is 98. It would be no different if we wrote 90 plus 8. It would just be different multiplication, but it all comes out the same. So now I'm going to write the multiplication, 4 times 100, and then 4 times 2. 4 times 100 is very simple to do mentally. Subtract it and you get 392. So a little bit of a different way to, to think of multiplication. I know a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking, I, I can just do this the normal way. I've, I've learned to do this a few years ago, but this is a good practice with mental math strategies. Next example here, we're gonna look at uh, a money problem. Three times $5.97. Let's say you wanted to buy something that costs $5.97 and you wanted to buy three of it. You want to be able to add that up or multiply that out mentally pretty quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to think of $5.97 as $6 minus three cents, three hundredths. Because again, $5.97 is very close to six. You can look at this either way, but I'm taking the easier route here by making it $6. Write the problem as three times six dollars and then three cents and then stick a subtraction sign in between them. And we do the arithmetic, three times six and then three times three hundredths. Three times six is 18 and then three times three is nine, but I'm not gonna write, think of that as nine. I have to remember, I'm doing three times three cents, which is not nine, it's actually nine cents. That's what you wanna think of it as. And now you can subtract. 18 minus 9 cents is $17.91. In our next example, we have a decimal. And just like we did with the money, we're going to break up the decimal. We're going to break up 6 and 3 tenths into 6 and 3 tenths. We're going to think of it as 6 and 3 tenths. All right, so your big step here is to break it up 6 plus 3 tenths. Write that in the parentheses. And then what number are you going to distribute? We're going to distribute the 9. The 9 is going to be distributed into everything in parentheses. 9 times 6 and then 9 times three tenths. Nine times six is 54. Nine times three is 27, but it's not $27. This is nine times three tenths. So we need to put the decimal in there by moving it over one. And so you get two and seven tenths. So be careful when you're dealing with decimals. Nine times three, of course, is 27, but we're not doing nine times three. We're doing nine times three tenths. So we should get a number that's kind of small. And now the addition is very, very simple. 54 plus 2 is 56. 54 plus 2 and 7 tenths is 56.7. Same kind of problem here. We have 3 times 8 and 2 tenths. We're going to break up 8 
Uh, we're going to break up 8 and 2 tenths into 8 plus 2 tenths. 3 times 8, 3 times 2 tenths. So make sure you do this step of rewriting the problem. Now we're going to distribute the 3 into the 8 and into the 0.2, the 2 tenths. 3 times 8 is part of it. 3 times 2 tenths is the other, and we're adding this time. We're, we didn't change it to 9, so we're going to do 3 times 8 and 3 times 2 tenths. 3 times 8 is very simple, 24. 3 times 2 tenths is kind of like 6. However, 3 times 2 is 6. We're, we're multiplying 3 times 2 tenths, so we better stick a decimal in there. So 24 plus 6 tenths is very, very simple, 24 and 6 tenths. All right, here's another one. We have 8 times 5.7. 5 and 7 tenths. We're going to break up 5 and 7 tenths into 5 plus 7 tenths. So what do we put inside the parentheses? We're going to put 5, we're going to put a 7 tenths, and then we're going to add. Biggest mistake I see with these kind of problems is that people don't always put the decimal. Remember, this is 5 and this is 7 tenths. Some people write 5 plus 7. This is not, if you wrote 5 plus 7, that equals 12. This number is not 12. This is 5 and 7 tenths. So you better make sure your addition matches up. The number 8 is being distributed into the 5, and it's being distributed into the 7 tenths. So now what we have is we have 8 times 5, and we have 8 times 7 tenths. 8 times 5 is 40, and then 8 times 7 is 56. And again, to just repeat myself again and again, we're not multiplying 8 times 7. We're multiplying 8 times 7 tenths. So yes, there's going to be a 5 and a 6 in our answer, but the decimal is not here. It's between the 5 and the 6. And that makes the math and the arithmetic very simple. Okay, in our last example, what we're going to do is we're going to take a number a little bit bigger than a two-digit number. We have a three-digit number. So this time, we're going to break it down again by place value. 6 times 276. So this is 200, it's 70, and it's also 6. So I'm going to rewrite it as the sum of three numbers. 200 plus 70 plus 6. We're going to distribute the 6 into everything. 6 times 70 is 6. And then 6 times 6, right like that, and then add those up. So 6 times 200 is 1200. 6 times 7 is 42. So 6 times 70 is 42 with a 0. And then 6 times 6 is pretty simple. That's just 36. Now add it all up and you get 1,656. Okay, that does it. I have about no voice left, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Everyone have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.